first thing we need to do is to make our beer batter and to do that we add four heaped tablespoons of all-purpose flour we then add two teaspoons of baking powder that's baking powder not baking soda and then you've got a choice you can make the the batter with water or you could use some beer that's what I'm gonna do and you just add add that to your flour a little bit at a time and we want quite a thick mixture now we don't want it so thick that it doesn't run from the from the whisk but we don't want it thin and watery because we want this to stick to the onion rings or to the yeah to the rings of onion and if we have it too thin by the time we've lifted it from the the bowl to the frying pan it's all going to have dripped off so we have to be you have to use your judgment here on what you think is is right and what's not quite quite thick we are going to check it again before we actually start doing the onion rings because we're going to put this in the fridge now and we'll leave leave it to stand for a couple of hours ideally we'll just allow the flavors to to intensify but but I think that's what we're looking for we're looking for something that falls from the whisk but it's still quite thick so I'm making quite large onion rings so I've been and got some large onions and I'm going to just take the ends off these and then carefully peel the, the outer skin off entirely your preference how thick you want these but uh, I'm going to do them fairly thick maybe I don't know one centimeter thick just take your time I'm probably just going to cut this one in half push it out and I like to leave it sort of wants to come away in, in, in segments I like to leave two together I want to take a, some of your flour about a tablespoon spread that over maybe a little bit more quite a few onion rings in there and grab some of your cling film put that over the top we're just going to give these a when you're ready to start making your onion rings about an hour before you want to take the the batter out of the fridge let it uh, come back up to temperature a little bit I added just a little bit more liquid to mine uh, what you find is on standing that it can thicken uh, I think it rehydrates all the bread in there so it can thicken a little bit but this is uh, this is what we're looking for we want something that runs easily but not not liquid we want in a, a fairly thick batter and then you put your fryer on um, mine is set at 350 which is 180 celsius and I'm using peanut oil and you give that a good coat you've got to get your fingers dirty or messy but the key to this now is and I've I found this out a while ago is not to drop the onion ring straight in because if you do it's going to sink 
and then it'll stick to the bottom of your basket. So you just hold it in there just a second till it starts to fry. And then you lower it in slowly. And there it goes, that one's floating. Now I've only got a small fryer, so I'm gonna have to do mine in batches. So luckily I've got my mac and cheese in the oven. That's where these are gonna go once I'm done. So that's all I can get in my, my little fryer. It's 300 rings at a time. So they take about five minutes per batch. So you need to plan ahead if you, if you want to cook lots of these things, you need to allow enough time. So after two or three minutes, the first batch is almost done. And I say almost, because these are probably gonna have 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. So I don't want to overdo this first batch. So you can see the colour on those, they're turning, they're turning brown, golden brown, but we don't want, as I said, we don't, we don't want to overdo these, because these will continue to cook in the oven. If we get these to the proper colour now, they'll probably burn in the oven, so that's not what we need. <laughs> 